It's my feel good breakfast show. Can you believe it is that time of the year again? It is Easter weekend and many people are familiar with the Christian celebrations that takes place over this time of year. But few people know about Pesach or Passover that's celebrated by the Jewish community over Easter weekend. So joining us in the Expresso Kitchen this morning, we have Sarah, Rufka and Esther who's going to be preparing a delicious meal for us this morning. And also tell us a bit more about Pesach and the celebrations around it. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us in the Expresso Kitchen this morning. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Can you believe, eh? The year is just flying. Right? We had Easter weekend already. Mm. And uh, we're very excited. I mean, I'm very excited to celebrate it as well. But I'm very interested to know a little bit more about Pesach or Passover. What exactly does that mean? So Passover is a festival of freedom. And um, about three and a half thousand years ago, the Israelites were slaved in Egypt, in ancient Egypt. And then they were set free. And therefore, until today, we celebrate that freedom and the, be the beginning of the Jewish people becoming a nation. Oh, okay, fantastic. Well, there we go. And you brought along your two lovely daughters as well, who I'm sure is a big help in the kitchen at home as well. Yeah, Absolutely. no, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this looks delicious. We're making a mango chutney chicken bake. Is that correct? That's right. Mm -hmm. Is this a traditional kind of dish you would do over Passover? This is something we do every Passover, and you can't believe how popular this is. I mean, this recipe has gone totally viral in the community, and every year I get phone calls, just remind me, what's the chutney recipe? <laughs> I've got it in my phone this time, ready to message to anyone who wants it. Oh, um, it's really, it's, it's so versatile because you can use it with chicken, you can use it in your meat, and you can use it on salmon. You can serve it hot and, or cold on the side. So okay. it's really lovely. All right, and, and fairly easy to make? Is it? Very simple. Lots of chopping preparation, All right. but easy to make. What do we have on going okay. on that side? So we start with sautéing the onions, and when, once they're almost ready, you add your celery okay. and your green and yellow peppers, and a little bit of chili pepper as well, just to give it that kick. Did you guys help mom chop all of those? Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> okay, just keep a good eye on the stove so it doesn't burn, but all while right. that's sautéing over there, you prepare your flavorings, okay. which is some wine. All right, any, any choose, a uh, dry wine, any sweet wine, wine? A sweet wine. A sweet wine, yeah. okay. Some sugar. Brilliant. A little bit of salt to taste, and you can always add more later. Okay. Same with the lemon, you just enough to taste. Depends how tart you would like it. That's it. So what, what would you suggest though? Just what do we have there? Like uh, half a lemon? Uh, yeah, at least half a lemon. Okay. You can always add more at the end as well if you want it a little bit more tart. Perfect. So now there's lots of chopping to do here. So that's a lot of preparation. So what I tend to do is, and I'm always afraid that the mango season is going to be ahead of us. You know, we're going to run out of time with the mangoes. So that's it. I actually chop up the mangoes in advance, like weeks in advance. Okay. Chop them up, put them in the freezer. They freeze beautifully. Really? You can even actually um, freeze the whole mango. Just like and that. And then defrost it and it's like perfect. So you can prepare everything and then the mangoes just add afterwards. You use Granny Smith apples, gives a nice tart flavor. And once this is sauteed and ready, you add your apples and your mango. That's it. Okay. So, so between the two of you, who's the, who's the little chef in the house? Hey, this little one. Yeah. Hey, so what are some of your favorite stuff to make? Um, chocolate brownie. Okay. Potatoes and eggs. Chocolate brownies, potatoes, and eggs, eh? Yeah. That's it. And, and, and you, do you fit in the kitchen, or do you, what is, what is your forte? I clean up after you <laughs> Well, everybody needs somebody to clean up afterwards yeah. as well, exactly. I'm sure mom appreciates that. All right. So we are in the kitchen. We are busy making a delicious mango chutney baked chicken dish, a traditional Jewish meal prepared over Easter weekend. And the smells coming out of the kitchen, absolutely fantastic this morning. So, Sarah, how long would you actually saute that? Okay, so when it's sauteed, you add your fruit. Okay and your flavor. Oh, there goes our flavor. You bring it to boil, and once it's bubbling, you then lower the fire, and then you let it simmer for three to four hours. Three to four hours. With your lid on. Okay. But keep checking every about half hour, so it just doesn't catch at the bottom okay, so on a low fire. Give it a, give it a nice stir every, every so often. Yeah, and you can't believe the smell, the aroma that fills the house with Look, this. Look, the amazing. minute you put that in there as well, I mean, those aromas just fill the studio yeah. as well. It's the first thing we make in preparation for Passover, so as yeah. soon as the smell just wafts through the mm, house, you know. the kids are like, smells like Passover. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once yeah. that is done, it looks similar to this over here. That's it. Is this the prepared one? So from this step, so we've done our, we've done the chutney. What happens next? Um, you have to take your pepper. Okay. Sprinkle it on. All right. Take some salt. Then you take the chutney. You make. I'm sure you put a nice generous helping on there as well, eh? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then you put it in the oven. Just like that. All right. Yeah. Should I grab it from you? All right, let's pop it in the oven. So once we put it into the oven, how long does that take? 
So in the oven, it depends on what you're baking, but if it's salmon, about 20 minutes, and if it's your chicken cutlets, uh, about half an hour. Right. If you're doing roast chicken, you can leave it on in for about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, what I also sometimes do is actually roast the chicken okay. with nothing on, and then just heat up the chutney and serve it as a, on the side as a dipping sauce. That could be which nice Which also as well, looks yeah. very beautiful as well. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Well, it is a beautiful mango chutney chicken bake here in the Feel Good Breakfast Show this morning. If you want to get the recipe for this and try and make this over Easter weekend, you just need to SMS that keyword FRUIT to 33728. That's FRUIT to 33728. We'll send you that shopping list and we'll also add a link to the recipe that you can go follow. Just keep in mind those SMSs cost one rand fifty. But if you want to have one last look at how we made this delicious recipe, here's your chance. Fry onion, chili, peppers and celery until soft. Add apples, mangoes, wine, lemon juice and sugar, then bring to a boil. Cover and simmer for three hours. Season chicken, then spoon the chutney over the chicken and bake. For the full recipe, visit the Espresso Morning Show Facebook page or log on to www.expressoshow.com. SMS the keyword FRUIT to 33728 to receive the shopping list on your phone. Click on the link provided to view the recipe. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. No free SMSs. T's and C's apply. Really, really easy. Just once again, that keyword is fruit. SMS that to 33728. We'll send you that shopping list. Also add a link to the recipe that you can go follow. And we're just finishing our dish up nicely. What are you doing there, Esther? I'm just putting the onions on. So okay. You can put on any side dish. We're pretty limited on Passover. We can't have chicken or, yeah. you know, rice. I mean, you can't have rice or like pasta, so we do lots of salads, so it's always good with a green right. salad. Right, and that's it. That's a finished dish. That's it, yeah. Love it. Sarah, like she touched on a, on a, on a point that I just want to expand on. Mm. What are some of the, 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 the rules for you, for you over Passover? Are there certain foods that you can and cannot consume? Absolutely. We're actually very restricted on Passover, which is nice because we're limited and therefore we can be very creative. So we can't eat anything that's leavened. So anything um, made from the five grains of wheat, barley, oats, spelt or rye. Um, can't be eaten unless it's in the form of matzah, yeah. which is the very, uh, very flat, crisp bread, which is to commemorate the Jews leaving Egypt in a hurry and therefore didn't have time for their bread to rise. So therefore we eat only this flat bread. Um, and so we're pretty restricted in yeah. terms of what we can eat. So lots and lots of fruit and vegetables, sweet potato and yam and all that kind there of thing. There we go. Well, I'm glad. Stuff. Sweet potato is one of my favorite things as well. So there we go. Sarah, uh, Rufka, Esther, thank you so much. It's been so special thank having you, you in the Espresso Kitchen this morning and a happy Easter to you and your whole thank family you. as well. And there you have it, a mango chutney chicken bake right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. That keyword, once again, fruit. SMS that to 33728. And you could be making this at home. Why not tonight? Check it out.